from Boca Raton, Florida, Rabbis Ephraim Goldberg, Philip Moskowitz, and Josh Brody are taking you Behind the Bema. The BRS rabbis schmooze about contemporary issues and talk to special guests who give a behind-the-scenes look at how they got to where they are and what keeps them going. Welcome to Behind the Bema. The BRS rabbi schmooze. That never gets old, Rabbi Brody. Are we, are we fixing that or we're just leaving it that way? Zecher l'churban. Shmurz. I'm actually coming to you live right now from the other side of Rabbi Goldberg's study. The BRS <laughs> rabbi's schmooze. First of all, Check Rabbi Brody, big mazel tov to Rabbi Brody. Uh, most of all, because he has a normal background, a little light in the room. He's no longer broadcasting from oh the bottom of a cave. <laughs> the dungeon. And... And you can now hear him on our podcast, which uh, we're really excited about. Mazel tov to me. You can hear me again because I've learned I have to hold this microphone close to my mouth. And I hope now, the last couple of weeks, I heard that people had to keep modulating their volume depending <laughs> who was speaking. Hopefully, you don't have to do that anymore. So a lot of mazel tovs. Then Rabbi Moskowitz, you've always got it all together. So thank you for being you. Big birthday, <laughs> Rabbi Brody, coming up. Big one. Rabbi and this Brody. is what every, they say every 19, 20 years, it actually coincides. So I got my Hebrew birthday coming up on friday night shabbos right after you break your fast sarbatavis my birthday so, so they don't coincide is what you're saying no it coincides on the same day <laughs> no it doesn't it How coincides does it coincide for me day? what so you know it's interesting so you, ha you have your birthday coming up they sent, out, they sent out a birthday card for me to fill out but it was an e-card Right, so I filled it out online, and then I get to choose what color I want it to look like and what handwriting I want it to be in. Mm. But is that the same? You guys have both. You've gotten now an electronic birthday card. Is it the same? Is it the same as when someone actually takes the time to fill it out? Yes, yeah. equally meaningless. Both <laughs> equally meaningless. <laughs> Not meaningless. I'll tell you the truth. Yeah, it's as meaningful as the message that's in it. So if it's like "Happy birthday, great year, happy B day, Rabbi." Then the gesture is important, significant. We love everybody who does it. It's very nice. But it's all about, you know, the personalization. It's all about what you put into it. But, but you don't think there's a difference between electronic and a handwritten note? Yeah, there is. I tell you what, because when you get the electronic one, there's this feeling. It always says, do you want to respond? Like if you get a card in the mail, you don't send back a thank you for the card. But here you have to write back a whole card. Just <laughs> thank you for the electronic card. It happens to be a whole industry. I, I once looked into it where you can submit your handwriting. They upload it and turn your handwriting into a font. And then you could write notes and cards that you will print out in your own handwriting. So in other words, today, I never write. It, it, for me, when I have to fill out those cards with my pen, I'm like my hand kills. I can't write more than like two words. I just I never write anymore. I haven't written in years. I could type like a monster, but I can't write. So I looked into it. It was very expensive. It wasn't really worthwhile. No, you have very neat handwriting. Into a font. You have I very neat handwriting? neat handwriting. Need it. Very neat handwriting. Uh, you must. I've seen your handwriting. It's very else. neat. My handwriting. You remember Kerry in the office? Kerry could not read my handwriting if her life depended on it. I I might as well be a doctor with my handwriting. Rabbi Brody, what birthday is this? What number? It's number forty-six. I'm actually doing the math right now of the nineteen years, so I'm not really sure yeah. how that works out. <laughs> It doesn't because it's not the same day. That's why it's not. So I'll tell you something amazing is um, yeah. I recently ran into Rabbi Effie Buchwald and was talking Love to him. him. He's still running the explanatory service at Lincoln Square Synagogue. He's a ball of energy, positivity, much like our guest tonight, Mayor Kay. We're so excited to have him on. So I asked Rabbi Buchwald, who was one of my heroes when I first came to Boca, before Boca ever heard of Rabbi Josh Brody, I was in the Kolel doing outreach and we started the explanatory service. And it was modeled not... 50% or 80%. It was modeled 105% after Rabbi Buchwald's famous, one-of-a-kind, original explanatory service at Lincoln Square in Manhattan. So I said, Rabbi Buchwald, like, who'd you hand it off to? Who's doing it now? He's like, what do you mean? I'm doing it. I said, you're still doing the explanatory service. I said, how long have you been doing it? So he said to me, I just completed my 45th year. Wow. So I happen to be the same age as you, Rabbi Brody. I just caught just up just turned that new age that means right. i said to him i said you've been doing the explanatory service since before i'm born <laughs> and you're still at it positive happy excited he said why wouldn't i be every shabbat yeah. is a new guest and a new energy and a new week and i was just so 
so invigorated spending time. Again, you know, much like our guest tonight, Mayor Kay, you know, I hope everybody's not planning on falling asleep after this episode because you're going to be wide awake. He's one of those people that the, the positivity and the energy is just contagious. So Rabbi Brody, I know you're cut from the same cloth as uh, Rabbi Buchwald, really walking in his footsteps of outreach. You have another 45 years in you? 45 years he's been doing it. I got many, many more than 45. We're going to keep going. And I can tell you, we saw one of these great videos. I remember a, year, a couple of years ago, you probably see it on YouTube, where back in, I think it was the early 80s, right when Lincoln Square was getting started, or maybe the 70s, there was he there was like this this uh, partnership, I guess, between Rabbi Riskin, right, as the rabbi, you had Rabbi Buchold as the, uh, as the outreach rabbi, and then you have the Chaz, right? Right. Sherwood Goffin, he was the the chazan of the shul. Of and they would go at Olav Shalva, and they go out into like Times Square, the three of them, and put on like a road show to try and get people to come be excited about Shabbat and get excited about Judaism and and their shul. It's amazing. He's had, he's had famous people. He's had politicians. He's had amazing, yeah. amazing people. He was telling me stories just in the few minutes that we were, were overlapping, and he's really an amazing person. We're going to have to have him on behind the bima because he's one of those. He, I would say he's an unsung hero. He's he's undersung. I've just coined a new phrase. That means that people know who he is, and Rabbi Buchwald is an icon, but he's not even appreciated for what he's done and what he spread. You know, he was doing it before <laughs> anyone else was. Yeah, I just remembered. We were actually honored by their organization, by NJ. Yes, we were. <laughs> Ten years ago. And do you remember how good the dinner was? We missed it. We didn't show Why up. Why did we miss it? No, we did not storm. show up. It's not no, like I'm we got was, lost. There was a snowstorm. There was My a mom massive was there. snowstorm. Yeah. It was a massive snowstorm, and we didn't make the very dinner that was honoring us. Yeah. Kind of like Rabbi Moskowitz was honored at our dinner this year, See? and he didn't make it, and neither did anyone else, because <laughs> we haven't right. had it yet. <laughs> haven't That's had it right. yet, but we're going to. Happens to the best of them. We're going to, and it's going to be, and it's going to be amazing. So, very happy birthday to Rabbi Brody. Happy birthday to all those Thank celebrating you. their birthdays out there. It's good to be together again, and uh, hope everyone who's listening and watching, whether right now or later, is uh, doing well, feeling healthy, keeping safe. Numbers keep going up around us, and it's you know continues to be a tale of two worlds. On the one hand, there's this vaccine euphoria; it's going around. Israel per capita has more people getting the vaccine than anybody else. Um, our shul, which is made up, I think I'm the only, the three of us are the only non-doctors in the entire Boker Ton synagogue. So basically, right. everybody's vaccinated but us. And I'm just, just joking. But there's on the, wink once if you've had the vaccine. <laughs> there's a lot of vaccine, a lot of vaccine going around. And on the other hand, the numbers are skyrocketing is possible new strain of the virus so you know everyone's got to buckle down be safe be careful and it's a time that we all have to uh watch what we're doing we are really excited about our guest w which is your favorite before we bring him on what's your favorite mayor k video rabbi moskowitz definitely the the high-fiving the high-fiving in new york city i love it i have so many questions about it what was his favorite moment from that did he get what kind of looks and conversations did he start because of it and i just i love it because it is just authentic smiles, right? You're going to people that are going through the doldrum of their lives. You're going over to them. You're slapping them five, and you're bringing smiles to people's faces. And it's I real. loved it. And I was, I was just watching with my kids, and we were like cackling. We were having so much fun with so, it. What about you, Rabbi Brody? Favorite Mayor K video before we bring him on? I love that that uh, Super Bowl homeless video. It's amazing. Goes out, buys the clothing for these guys, invites yeah. them to a Super Bowl party. Patriots. Yeah. You know what my favorite Mayor K video is? I was just going to ask you, what's your favorite Mayor so, K video? I'm so happy you asked. My favorite <laughs> Mayor K video, yeah. this is next one. Ooh, because it's for sure going to be the best. And without any further ado, what a pleasure, what a joy, what Are an honor to welcome one? the one. And I'm not in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in the Maybe. best ones or the next one. <laughs> Mayor, thank you so much for joining yes. us. I am Rabbi Ephraim Goldberg. We're with Rabbi Philip Moskowitz and Rabbi Josh Brody. We're so excited to take you behind the Bema tonight. And to know what's going on behind that smile, those white teeth, what's going on behind that ball of positivity and all of those uh, videos. So first of all, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Wow. Thank you so much. Wow, what a crew. You got all the rabbis <laughs> better tonight. We got, wow. we got a big crew. We got a, we got a great following. We started yeah, this little fun. gig um, at the beginning of Corona, just a way of connecting to people, not only giving... Uh, shiurim and, and technical lectures, but really just shooting the breeze, bringing on guests, and we're very grateful. People seem to enjoy it. Uh, I don't know about our banter, but they certainly enjoy our guests. We've brought in great guests like you, and we're just trying to light the world on fire. We need it. It's a dark place out there, so thanks for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Um, behind the smile, a whole lot of Colgate. I brush twice a day. Um, <laughs> Dr. Levy, shout out to Dr. Levy. He has a great practice in Connecticut. He'll be so <sighs> happy to hear this. I'm trying to still work on flossing. I'm not perfect. Um, but You're it's on your way. 
Yeah, they, either way. But let, let's let's give the audience. There is nobody who doesn't know who Mayor K is, but let's give just a little bit of background. But um, Mayor K K is not really your last name, Kalmanson. Maybe you'll talk a little bit about the stage name. But you are an internet personality. Cool. You, um, you maybe you'll share with us I a little bit about your background. So you know, I didn't do my homework. Died, share, share, share a little I'm bit about your background. I don't know who your contact is, but uh, maybe a shy, perhaps shy. Perhaps, but. A little shy. Yeah. Shout out and a thank you to Shy Stern, my good buddy who hooks me up with all good, all good things in life. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll learn a little bit about your background. And I believe you even uh, studied abroad to rabbinical school, uh, got a rabbi before your name and uh, your connection to, to Chabad and to Hasidus and to what it's done um, for you. But you've taken that positivity, that love, that attitude, and, and you've brought it online and you've spread that love through your, your videos. And when I saw the number of viewers you have combined on your videos, Crazy. so I got to tell you, I give a lot of classes a week and, and this since Corona, I've been pretty excited to, to be putting them on YouTube, putting them on live. And, you know, a couple hundred people listen and I'm dancing the Kazatska. And then I look <laughs> and I'm like, wow, like, you know, a couple hundred people listen to me. And then I'm like, oh, Mayor K's videos. Let me just check. Let's see. How 25 many million. No, 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 no. Combined, Mayor, your videos have over 350 million views, which is bigger than I think most countries. If I'm wrong, then don't correct Wikipedia because it sounds really good. So just leave it that way. <laughs> but 350, let's divide that number in thirds. It's more than more, third. but let's yeah, say, thank God. Let's say it's 100 million. No, but you, you've got... No, it's like you've got, most of a billion. It's really unbelievable. It's really insane. Yeah. So, so tell us about your background. Tell us about how you got started in this business and how you got, how you, how you began this journey of spreading the positivity and the love. The year is 1990. I was born. I think it's, 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 you know, it's been a long time coming. No, there's no overnight success. It's, it's really something that I never looked at as a job or a business. And I think my bubby will cringe when I say that because she thinks I'm allergic to money. I think it's it's not the fueling, it's not the it's not the momentum that keeps me going to show up every day and to and to spread the message of positivity and light and to infuse that with my background and with with the Torah that I know and and the and the wisdom that I pick up from incredible teachers. And so, um, it, growing up, I suppose, and I did grow up Chabad and Chabad. I and in, in that in that philosophy and in that home, which is was always so open and warm. I've always been infused and taught. You know, obviously, Israel. Every you know, doesn't matter what kind of titles people have and how long their beard is and what does a Jew look like. I don't know. I just you know, it it, it it's just all about showing up and just sharing that one mitzvah in the moment and always being taught. And I only sort of share this in reflection because in the moment you don't realize you're practicing you're practicing presence and in the now. You don't you're, uh, you're not. You're, I'm not practicing not to judge somebody about their previous deeds, but what's what how they show up in the present moment. So like, there's all these subtle. Um, deep concepts that just are just part of my DNA, and so it's a, it's just and 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 if, and part of that it was always to do it with simcha with happiness. I wasn't always you know I wasn't the straight A type of kid in in school in yeshiva. Every two two to six months, me and the and the Rosh Hashiva always had a disagreement. He you know <laughs> I wanted his job and he had the job, and so he always he won that argument that I had to always leave, and so you know that wasn't that, that's my forte. So I think finding my 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 voice and my what was my strengths was connecting with people, um, doing more of the outreach, going out and, and, and creating um, programming. Uh, anything that was like sort of person to person, like in the now and in, in that sort of space, I thrived in. Uh, and so I, I sort of just, as I grew older and had more opportunity, more freedom to do as I please, I just found myself leaning more into that type of programming, into more of that type of leadership. Um, and with a lot, of course, it allowed me to travel the world. And to and to uh, and to feed that into my curiosity of the world and the different places and people and and flavors and tastes and so with all that combined and with my um, with my thirst and passion towards filmmaking and 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 performance it just sort of came all together in this culmination after I, I got my rabbinical degree, like you mentioned in Singapore and backpacked the world seven months by myself. I came back to New York City, saw a guy with his hand out. I was like, wait a second, let's film that. There, there's so much to unpack here. First of all, I, I don't know if you heard, we had Rabbi Kodlarski on uh, a couple months ago. And My great uncle. I if you heard, I oh, huh? is it really? He's, yeah. he's, also, he's also phenomenal. So I don't <laughs> know if you better, heard. You got better Wi-Fi than he does. <laughs> We're going to go through your whole family, by the way. I, I, don't know if, I don't know if you heard, but he did He did elevate me to the title of general in Savos Hashem. I was a private until the conversation that night. Unclear yet how many stars. I still got to work on a couple more stars. You didn't have to cut out all the Savos Hashem, like, I did not. the magazines. I did not. 
You did, by the way. I shortcutted it and I went straight from private to general. I highly recommend it. You know, it's funny you say you're allergic to money because when I told my kids that, do you know that Mayor K has 350 million views? So my kids, this just tells you about kids these days. They're like, wow, I wonder if he monetized that with YouTube and is able to really get residual income from it. And I'm like, really? That's the takeaway? 350 million people's life has been changed by the videos. But anyway, um, so so here's my question for you. The young Mayor K or Mayor Kalmanson, Let's go back to ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, maybe struggling, as you say, in the classic definition of sitting and learning in yeshiva, finding yourselves, obviously, in the arts and, and creativity, loving fellow Jews. What path did you think you were on? If you had to fast forward to where you are now, where'd you see yourself? Did you think you were going to be a lawyer, a doctor, accountant, businessman, start an Amazon business, eBay business? Like, Where did you see yourself? It probably wasn't here because no one was doing this back then. So what path do you think you were on? And, and the corollary of the question is, who are the role models, the mentors? Who in your life helped steer you? So when you and those Russia yeshiva had the literal or proverbial disagreements and you <laughs> kept changing lanes or being redirected, who helped pivot you? Who said, Mayor, you're a ball of light? And you're going to change the world. And there's shluchim who have shuls and shluchim who have yeshivas. And you're a shliach who's going to have the biggest platform of them all because you're going to have the online YouTube community and you're going to change the world. So what did you think you were going to be in terms of how you got here now? And who helped you along the way? Tremendous questions, Rabbi. Wow. Wow. Love it. Uh, so to, to, where to begin? I, I didn't. I nest, I, different stages in my life, I had different goals or vision. I, I mean, there was times where I never thought I would be a shleach. And then there was a time when I was 19 years old and I was like just loving what I was doing. I was about to go to Singapore and I was coming from, I was in Manchester for the year. I was running a whole bunch of programming for kids, teens and adults out there. And I was like, wow, I could, I could do this. I love this. And, um, and I also, and then I went to Singapore. I got involved. I was sent to Bali in Indonesia for like five, six times to run Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Pesach programs, uh, Siddharam over there. And I was like, wow, I think I love Bali. And I actually envisioned for a while to be a shliach in Bali. I had a whole, pr- I had the whole thing. I knew that the, the community loved me there. About 300 Jews at the time lived there consistently besides the tourism. So I was like, cool, strong enough community to have a community as well as fant- I could fund it by hosting, like, you know, being the kosher place in town, do weddings there. Like I was just like already thinking out where it could be just finding a wife who'd want to move to Bali, one of the most popular Muslim countries in the world may be an issue, but hey, Mayor K. So, um, <laughs> but then that, that's where it's transformed and, 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 and changed into, into other a- avenues. So there, there were moments where I thought I'd be, you know, a traditional shliach in the sense. Um, but then I also knew that I, I always loved video and creation. And so I did see myself um, in that regard. I didn't know exactly how to get there. And, and, and there were people throughout my life when I was 16, 19, 22, when I was in like, you know, late night after the kids were sleeping in Camp Simcha, I was speaking to a co-counselor. He's like, and I was sharing my dreams after camp. And he was like, cool. And like fast forward to five years, like, mayor, I can't believe you're doing what you talked about so many years ago. So I think there's always, I always envisioned myself being in, in entertainment in, in, in some sort of sense. You're right. Ten, eight years ago, 10 years ago, uh, social media didn't exist. So I didn't, I, I was thinking more traditionally in this in like feature films and that's still a dream of mine. So we could talk about that in five years from now. Go, hey, you talked about it on the, on the, on the podcast. So I'm behind the mirror. But uh, so that's still something that I envision. Uh, but it's, I think a big part of, of any type of business or vision and passion is is to be able to ebb and flow, especially in this time as in COVID, we have to realize that we can't, you know, we gotta be, um, we gotta be like bamboo. It's gotta, you gotta be able to be a little flexible. So as new opportunities came about, I just, you know, I sort of pivoted and moved and, and was still trying to, you know, keep all those eggs in the basket in the sense of entertainment, film, directing, acting, but also have infused meaning and purpose in the messaging that I was creating as well. So earlier on, to tie into who uh, some role models, I would say, um, without a doubt, the Rebbe is a big one. Mm-hmm. And I only sort of appreciate that now as, a, as, a, as I'm an adult and uh, I'm reading the new t- type of literature that's coming out through his biographies. I mean, I'm a Chabatska, right? I, I'm a group of Chabad, but I, it was, it was always a bit, I didn't, <clears throat> I may get, you know, my uncle may give me a hard time, but I, I <laughs> always thought, um, I always, and there goes my Bali shluchas after this, but um, <laughs> I always thought the, um, no, I mean, the Rebbe was, he, the pictures were on the wall in my wallet. And, um, but it, it always seemed like, like this un, like, out of this world, angelic type of human or not human. I don't know. Like it was just like, I couldn't really relate in so many ways. And then after, as, as, as the new, new, there's new books coming out and I'm like sort of revisiting and being reintroduced to the Rebbe. And it just blows my mind to, um, to, uh, 
to, to understand who he was as a person and as a leader and to learn those values. Um, so like Tolishkin's book or Positivity Bias written by my cousin Mendel Kalmanson, like these are just some of the literature that just really brings a, a new perspective and a new admiration to uh, to to the Rebbe. And, and so a big part of that was my is my um, inspiration. Um, as well as um, my parents are, are, are big, uh, in a big instrumental way of just unconditional love, like huge and how they've been supporting me. I didn't, again, also appreciate as a child, right. And not realizing as children, we see our parents growing up and to see how young they were on the oldest and they were so supportive in my journey. And like such a young age, I was like, you know, I, I was, I got depressed and like, and there were so many challenges along the way. And I always seemed to push them just like, Hey, you, they, they, once they feel like they're in a flow with me, I sort of like, you know, throw another curveball, like just got my smicha. I'm going to go travel for seven months. So like what that we thought you. So like their, their, their patience and their unconditional love um, is so huge. And, um, and I just know friends of mine who have parents in the same age and same bracket and the same background and how open-minded and how supportive my parents are, um, perhaps compared to some others, is just really been a, a massive, um, yeah, some, some people who I look up to and God willing, when I'm a parent one day, uh, I want to read their book. If I could just uh, uh, pick up on one of the ideas that you just spoke about. First of all, thank you so much. Love your videos. My kids are obsessed with them. So thank you. Um, <laughs> um, every video, you look like you're having a ball of fun. Like you're right. just the type of guy, like you just want to go and hang out with for a night and just have a great time. My son's favorite video is the behind the scenes of the friends video with Morty Shapiro. Like you guys just look like you're having a blast. The smile, the energy, yeah. the positivity. Um, are there ever moments where you're not like that? Or are there ever moments where you have self-doubt, you referenced, you know, depression, in other words, moments of, of sadness, of questioning, of looking at the world and not seeing only positivity and light? It, it, does Mayor K wake up in the morning and you're, ah, let's go? Or are there times where you have a little bit more, less energy and a little bit more self-doubt? And, and how do you get through those moments? It's a great question. I mean, it's a question that's come up, especially after my mic drop um, video that's on same shameless plug on my YouTube channel. What's up? If you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe, share with family, WhatsApp groups, all that. Um, yeah, no, I, it, it's a lot of work. It's a vida. It's a vida. It's, um, I think as, as younger, um, I, it was less conscious. I was less, you know, conscious of that and, and it did flow naturally through me. And I wasn't really aware of like the feelings are coming in. What am I feeling now? What am I choosing right now? The choice wasn't necessarily there or processed as I grow older and, and life shows up in more revealed ways and, and the challenges come. It's just, it's an endless, it's an endless journey. And these, and these are the, the, this is work. This is the, this is the work that is challenged to, to work on myself, to work on my relationship with Hashem, to with, with relationships with my fellow man. Like it's, it's so yes, it comes off that way. And yes, that's something I thrive and strive to be on, on a daily basis. And I also wake up and 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 have to question that. And some days are not necessarily skyrocket friends jumping out of a airplane. <laughs> Holy shit! Not every day is like that. Um, and every day is is never going to be like that. It's not the it's not the reality we live in. And I think once we accept uh, life on life's terms and what comes with us, gamzu uh, tova, whatever that challenge may be, it, it's a my shift. So I'm just always I'm always trying to like recharge and to keep on as as a zig ziglar said you know yeah yes motivation is like showering yesterday shower won't keep you clean today so too with motivation so too with inspiration so right. too with whatever it is that you're working on yeah fantastic yesterday helped you but today you got to go back to that gym and, and do the, and do those push-ups and work out it's amazing i tell you you know i know rabbi moskowitz i don't think i ever told you the story but on the march of the living it might have been two years ago or three years ago i don't remember it was probably two years ago, right, Mayor? I mean, this was probably one of the greatest moments. I've been on the march almost 15 times. And I got to tell you, something happened on that march, which was literally, I, I would call it miraculous. I mean, it was a nace. Basically, it was sh Shabbos afternoon. We have about 200 local teenagers from South Palm Beach, from Boca, from some other communities. And they said, we're going to go and have Shalashudas right outside the new Jewish museum in the middle of Warsaw, middle of the Warsaw ghetto right opposite like this massive memorial of uh you know the, you know the warsaw ghetto and the uprising and everything and chabad staged the most unbelievable tent they've been doing it at least a year or two put up a big tent and it keeps getting bigger every year and you know as the activity for all of us you know shabbos was uh, ending and they said okay let's go we'll, we'll go we're gonna have shal shoot us with all these teenagers these kids, they never been to Shalashudas. They don't know what Shalashudas is. And this could have been the biggest disaster. And I'm telling you, 200 teenagers sitting around a table 
around a the table. They got gefilte fish. They never, they're not, they're not interested in eating gefilte fish. It's, you know, it's already 25 hours into Shabbos already. Everyone just wants to go and have some fun. They want to go have some free time in the middle of town. And I think it was, what's his name? Rabbi Duchman? Is that, is that who was with you? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry. So, yes. so listen, Rabbi Duchman comes out with mayor. And I'm thinking to myself, this is going to be the biggest disaster. This rabbi comes out like in a Superman outfit, Superman cape. <laughs> and I'm thinking, yeah. this is going to be a disaster. These kids are from Boca. These are like very, very, you know, like, you know, they, they're going to Harvard. They're going to some very, very exciting places. All of a sudden, I'm telling you, within three minutes, Mayor has all these teenagers dancing on the table. And then when Shabbos ended about you know, 45 minutes later in the making of Dalla, all of the kids were supposed to go free time in the city. And I, I remember saying to Jack and one of the other directors, I said, you see what this guy's doing? Mayor's here. You got this eighth day group. All of a Crazy. sudden we said, you said, we said, you know what? Let he, he can, he can get him. He, they, you'll see. I'm telling you, just give him five minutes of dancing after Shabbos. Two hours, two hours later, like they didn't want it to end. It was amazing. This guy, it's mad. Wow. So my question is after that lead up, it was amazing. Uh, it was amazing. Like, <laughs> before you go into your question, it just happened. I, I it have to mind like, you had the elite of like like Chabad rabbis there. You had like Randall Duchman. You had Penny right. Drew You had like you, you had like they really they for this project all star team. The elite, you know, like so and it worked. Had, it worked. It worked. It was amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. I mean, Shal Shudas and like the concert yeah. with eight day afterwards. Wow, like, we're these are kids that never would have had. It would have been free time, and instead two hours just rocking and I'm telling dancing Holocaust survivors in the middle. Of the, it was like a wedding for these survivors. It was unbelievable. But I'm just wondering if there's a message that you try to to get out to the teens today, or if there's a message that you say works with teens, or versus things that people are trying to do which is not working. What would you say that is? What's working? What resonates oh, with them? That's that's. I mean, that's. I, I guess if you're coming from like an edge. An, I don't know if it's a question like coming if you're coming from like an edu educator's pr perspective. Yeah, or someone like you, like what do you, what's the message you try to get out to them? You know, I guess as the I rabbi, mean, as, a, as an educator. Yeah, I mean, it's it's I, I, from like just from like a u very human and emotional point of view, uh, and it's the message I I guess wanted to hear as growing up was like you're good, you know, you're whole and complete. Hashem loves you, you know, I I, I love you, and and like you don't need to, and like that's what happens there at least for me. And my and, and I think what perhaps with teens is that there's a, there's no resistance against anything. The wall just, it's mush. Like there's, there's nothing like to hold them a, to rebel against. It's like, what? Oh, really? I'm whole and complete. And I feel like that's what we're always trying to go back to as an adult. Like we're always trying to go back to the inner child. And this is some inner child therapy work, but like, we're like to like realizing like you're enough, you're great. Could you always grow and be better? hundred percent. We just talk about challenges. That's always going to come through. But like for that core belief to like, just to realize like, especially as a teen, like we're, that's such a fragile state. We're figuring out who we are, teen, adulthood, what's going on, responsibility, hormones. There's so much going on in that world. Like there's already enough they're dealing with. They get it. They know what's up. Your kids are talking about monetization at the 12, you know, like, so like, let's give them, give them more respect. And then um, I don't think we give them more re enough respect as they deserve in that sense. And like, so to, to just like, I think shower them with love and especially in this generation uh, with that unconditional love. And then like, once you have that, and once there's a friendship there and there's certain level of respect and admiration, then they'll come to you to, for those conversations, for those doubts, for those questions, they won't feel that they're being judged um or, or questioned or, and and feeling bad or the bad you how many times did i go on shluchas and like a teen or or a young adult on campus would say I'm a, oh i'm a bad jew what's a bad jew you know like uh so i what's it called zach galvanakis i'm going a little tangent here to ask um, <laughs> you know that one he asked um, uh, yes, um oh, what's the paul rudd he's like are you a practicing practicing jew and paul replies to him i'm not practicing i perfected it so i <laughs> 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 so i mean so but to tie it back to what you're saying is I think they're showing up on that level of, of support is, uh, is it's, it's, it's really huge. And I think, uh, to, and then to and tie it into like, into like, into, into the person who they are, it's like going back to you matter. And like, God has given you, you know, you being here is God's proof that you're, you, you matter, you exist, you have those gifts. What are you going to do with that? How can we elevate what you're passionate about? So you could, you know, be proud of your identity to tie in with friends to, to make, you know, Am Yisrael stronger and more relevant. And like, you want to use TikTok? Awesome. How can we like make this like, you know, what can we do? How can I support you in this? And I think that, I think that's, I think that's a good place to start. So first of all, Mayor, I apologize. I apologize. I uh, I did not like go get a sandwich. Hashem decided. <laughs> Hashem, Hashem decided for whatever reason that my technology would freeze and break down. And until I got back on, I was convinced you were all knocked off too. So I'm glad that uh, that everything was smooth. Number one, number two, number two. Just as a point of clarification, you know that monetization comment. 
was like a nachas moment for me. But anyway, number three. So I know that your your themes that you focus on, joy, acceptance, empathy, sharing, diversity, inclusion, celebrating life, all the things that you've been talking about. It's a ball of energy. It's unbelievable. I'm curious, are you gearing this towards primarily the Jewish world? Um, right. Can you gear it to the Jewish world and non-Jewish world simultaneously? I imagine you say it's for everybody. We all need those values. But I guess my question is, and, and not to give you pushback, really to understand, you know, as a, as a rabbi and as a Chabadnik and as a person who's connected to Hashem, how do you sometimes figure out the balance? Do you ever worry that, that the idea for a video is pushing the boundary? Um, and who pushes back? How do you make sure that what you're doing is going to not only introduce positivity to the world, but also going to give nachas to Hashem? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, so I, initially, I, my from the get go, my my content um, it's it's been it's it's universal. Um, so when I when I knocked it off, it was always it's interesting to hear like rabbis like yourself talk about High Five New York. Initially, when that came out, I got a lot of pushback, and and not to say it's not necessarily there are like those controversial elements of like Shomer Nagir around it, and yet initially there was no support around it, and now as things progress. People are like, oh, I love that video. That's great. I love it. Show it to my kids. So it's interesting to see how, like, over the past four years since that video came out, how that conversation changes. And I think, and I don't, I don't know from anybody's perspective where that starts and goes, and because other videos and how that calculation takes place, maybe where the world is, where the kids are, to show the messaging. Um, but for where my attention is, is that it, I always approached um, my videos um, in a as showing up as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a Jew, but also like the, the messaging and the, and the message I want to share is universal. So Jew or, or, or Jew or not, or someone who isn't Jewish could appreciate it, could feel inspired and motivated as things got grew and, and my brand um, got a bit more recognizable. Uh, I think the Jewish community um, sort of welcomed me and they're like, Oh, cool. And, and so that brought, thank God. I'm, I'm so grateful for new opportunities around creation and business. And that sort of helped me create content specifically for the Jewish community. Um, and that's been awesome. And I love doing that. I just, we just shared a, uh, just created a music video for Joe Newcomb and Benny Freeman. And next week um, is a new video with Yoni Z and thank you. Hashem is coming out, which is going to be incredible. And so there's always these new opportunities to be able to create content for the, for the, for the, for the tribe. Um, and I'm also always, and, and I'm also creating content that could be appreciated by all the children of, 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 of God. So, um, that's, and and thing, and that's my, and that's what really calls to me there. And that's always been like, sort of, there are, there's so many opportunities to stay in the Jewish community and to keep busy in that. And I do feel like there's also a lot of opportunity with, and on a global scale and, um, and it's a tall order and it's, it's unsafe and it's, and it's, uh, and it's more risky. Um, for from a uh, creative and business standpoint, um, and um, I'm willing to take it on. So it's uh, so that's that's where I'm at on that note. As for the messaging and and balancing and and all that, it's a good question. I'm learning as I go. I don't have all the answers. Um, and and so I'm always I'm open. I hear. I listen. I get feedback. And uh, I have my, my I have my team. I have my top five who I lean on and and ask questions about. And that's and that's what really matters to me. And there's always going to be voices out there, and everyone have their opinion, which is awesome and, and respected. Um, you're, doing an, you're doing an amazing job, and I think that you know having you on tonight is so important. I hope there are young people listening because you know that message that you referenced about that you matter and that you're consequential and that everybody counts and finding right. your voice and tapping into your talents. It's so so important because you know the world is inviting us in so many more ways than ever. And on the other hand. In some in some parts of the Jewish world, and not only the Jewish world, but we're also creating narrower lanes that people have to fit mm -hmm. in. And when someone feels they don't fit in that box, then they feel lost rather than go discover their next. So, right. um, tell us uh, how many marathons have you run in? Rabbi, wow. your your mic is off. You're on your AirPods. Sorry. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, how did you know he runs in marathons? <laughs> on his Rabbi bio. First yeah, thing I there, there we go. How many marathons have there you There we go. Now exactly. you can hear me. Wow. A whole nother experience right now. <laughs> That's a great question. I've done, uh, whew, I think six, uh, close to six, I think six, yeah. five or six with um, a half marathons. I was with um, with High Lifeline, Team Friendship. Um, and uh, that's been awesome. And been training training for the New York full mar marathon. I have a slot in there. God willing, once the world heals a bit more and that opens up, we're going to be out there running. If, with, if you uh, need an extra lessons? person to run alongside you, let me know. <laughs> any, any lessons <laughs> training training for a marathon and competing? Any lessons for life from that? Oh man, a hundred percent. So many, <laughs> but here's one. Um, so I, I used to I, I was training around in Prospect Park, and 
what's what landed on me one day, I always wanted to make it into a video of some sort, but um, what landed for me was uh, one day I was just running and I was starting to compare myself to the people around me. I was comparing to myself, to the person who was running faster than me, the person who just passed by me. And, the, and then I started saying, oh, look at me. I just passed by that person. I'm sweating more. That's sweating less. All this comparison was starting to, you know, chatter in my mind. And I wasn't even half a mile in. And what landed for me was that, you know, it's, it's a, if you ran Pro a Prospect Park, it's just, you know, it's a circle. It's a, it's, a, it's a road that just circles around the whole park. And what I realized is I have no idea where on the journey is anybody coming into. So I may be passing by somebody right now and perhaps that guy already ran about 60 miles. You know, I may, you know, you don't know under those pants that he's wearing that may be a, a leg missing. You know, this person who's, who's, who's sweating more or sweating less. My, and what that just landed for me was that, you know, the comparing game is going to always defeat me. I'm always going to feel, it, we don't know where anybody's coming in onto this path on life, on their journey. And, I think what it's just all about supporting one another, right? And that's what's beautiful about a marathon, right? Everybody, whether you're running or not, I think humanity shows up on these marathons. And that's what we get so inspired by. Why do people come out and like make it a day event to bring their kids to? It's because we see people helping each other. We see the childlike personalities come out through dressing up, high-fiving. It's less about the race, but about crossing the finish line. And, uh, and you know, life is, is truly, it's not a, like a sprint. It is a marathon. It's about this, it's the distance that we go and, and, and who we, and the journeys and the memories we make along the way. I know Rabbi Mosko, so I'm going to let you guys, I'm going to hold on one more second. I'm going to let you jump back in. But Mayor, and then I'll be quiet or Hashem will determine that I'll be quiet. Obviously, he passed because I talk too much. Um, but Mayor, I know Rabbi Mosko touched this on, on this a little bit earlier, but could you share with us, you know, obviously without getting into personal intimate detail, but, you know, the moments between the big smiles, and the moments where, where you don't have that positivity, and, and I know Rabbi Moskowitz spoke about, is this really you offline? Do you wake up and, and do you jump out of bed like this? But have there moments or stages in your life where you didn't feel it, that you needed someone to give you this message? And, and someone who's down in the dumps like that, you know, obviously they can watch your videos. Hopefully they can listen to this podcast. What are the other ideas that somebody who's feeling down and a little out, what are the kind of things that someone can do to get one foot in front of the other to start on that journey towards that finish line again? Mm. It's a great question. It's and it's so important. Um, I think the most courageous thing someone could do today is ask for help. And uh, and that's like it's you know as as men and we're all you know men here and like I think a lot of toxic masculinity you know being passed down from generations and 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 the privilege that we have today is that we can ask for help. You know until now, our parents, grandparents were you know were running from from terrible terrible things and they only really focus on on just staying alive, putting food on the table. And we have we have this leisure of having the time and the resources to to grow mentally and emotionally, spiritually. And so I think, you know, someone if you if, who's listening or know somebody is, is to and that's the importance about just reaching out, saying, hey, how are you? You know, Australia has this day. How are you day? Right. It's just like you reaching out to somebody. You know, why do we why do we wait for Pesach and Rosh Hashanah to do those types of messages? You know why? It's, it's to really just send out a message. How are you? And it can, it can really change and save someone's life. So mm. the first thing I would say is ask for help. It's not, you know, you won't look down upon it. It's, it's actually the opposite. It's, it's, it's courage. Um, you know, courage is not about, it's not about being fearless. It's about facing the fear and stepping into it. And that's, and that's big. Um, so there's that. I think um, normalizing therapy is a big deal. Uh, and I mentioned top five and my therapist is one of the, one of those top five people. So that's, um, that's, that's, that's important um, uh, for me and, and to share that message to people. Um, and to and to oh. sort of like break down those stigmas around around the human condition that we all live in. This is you know a playground. We are you know the whole goal of life is to is to combine the spiritual and the physical. Is is it, you know is to uplift everything to see that within everything else. So um, so to to say like oh I'm not I'm not subjugated to these human like conditions. And for a while I did that. For a while I wanted my brand to just be happy. Just be positive. And this would be the outlet, the oasis in life, in the world, on the internet, where people could, there's other voices for, preaching other things, but this would be the place for pure happiness. And through my process, I realized that it was doing an injustice to many people because what happened was, like the questions you just mentioned, was that people were like, hey, Mayor, how do you stay happy all the time? And they were comparing themselves to me and realizing they can never be as happy as me. And it wasn't fair to show this only one side of face of myself, at least for me. And so, hence, why some through my messaging, some of my videos do touch on these other aspects of life is to show that within myself and within everybody, you, you'll have these highs and these lows. It's, it's, the, it's the journey. It's a roller coaster of life. And it doesn't make you any 
you know, anything less than anybody else. It's just facing that, showing up, leaning on each other and, 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 you know, going through life and, and enjoying and, and enjoying the process, which we call, um, uh, yeah, living. Amazing. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. I want to, I want to transition to your videos. Um, you said you were running in prospect park and you had this idea for a video. It hasn't happened yet. Walk us through from the moment that light bulb goes off in your head. Where do you get the inspiration for the videos from? Where do you get the ideas from? And, and how do you I decide which ideas are going to translate well into a video, which ideas are not going to? And as a corollary to that, which has nothing to do, but I want to get it anyways, uh -huh. is how much of the videos is staged and how much of it is authentic? So when you're running around slapping high five, are you going over to the person first and be like, hey, buddy, I'm about to come over. You're going to be on video. Make sure you look surprised. Yeah, yeah these are great questions. So... Um ideas so it's it's interesting it's like a, being a sponge i mean how could can i say a moment in which you know it was created it's hard to say i think like for example like high five new york was a beautiful accumulation of just different experiences leading up to this very moment i was it was just good timing i'll use this as an example because you've used it a couple times it's like here i was fresh off the boat coming from traveling the world i was up like in this hippy dippy stage of like everybody loves everybody and love and peace and connectivity and i'm walking down in new york city so sort of like this you know very specific type of energy city where people are focused and hustling and bustling to the next place and not, not being present where they are, always trying to catch something. And seeing the high five, perhaps if I didn't go travel and perhaps I didn't, I wouldn't have thought this, but being I was, I was looking in New York with these new eyes and with new, this new energy and perspective, I was like, wait a second, that person is looking, you know, I, I just saw a high five in that moment. And, and so, and then also my passion of being video, I was like, instead of just going over to them, like, let's, let's create a video around this and post it to this new platform called YouTube. So I, I sort of was plugged into it. So I think there's always these different ingredients yeah. that come together at a time. And so what I try to do is have my antennas always open and, and just always be picking up on things. And perhaps I'll see something about the store for later, always sa save ideas, save, save quotes, put them together. And then one moment at one time, someone will be triggered and I'm like, ah, this is a good moment. Or, and, and I think that's what's beautiful about and what's been exciting to me about, about creation and, and new ideas. Um, and as for implementation, I think, you know, the greatest ideas are found in the graveyard, as uh, Les Brown says. So, like, what I mean by that is um, it's, it's all about action. So I think a lot of people get stuck in the idea process. And so, like, it's really about getting it down and, and letting go of perfection. So it's, most of the time, if not all the time, what I thought about how the idea would look like, it doesn't show up that way. There's a lot of maybe similarities to it, but it's never the same. And I think once I give into that process, I just like, make it happen. Um it just, it happens. So it, it, some, some ideas are more harder to bring down into fruition than others. And they're more, a lot more moving parts. But for me, the goal is to sort of let go of perfection and just, and once they have an idea, get it done, get it done. And also I, I'm sort of plagued in the way that I can't necessarily move on to, a, I can only have a little amount of skills on the fire. I always have to let go of, you know, cook something, eat it, and then move on to create space for something new. So that's sort of a motivation for me to like, okay, see it through, move on to the next one. And uh, lastly, we keep it authentic. We'll keep it real. So high five New York. Yeah. We just, you know, hidden camera. It took us about two days to make that video, to be honest, because we sort of became the lucky charm for people who would try to get into cabs. Like once I lock eyes with someone, like, okay, I'm gonna go for that person with the handout. They got into a cab as I was like <laughs> mid air. And they're bloop, inside. So like it, it literally took us time because we didn't find it out, and we just wanted to get those authentic reactions. Right. So um, you'll be surprised. I got I clocked like a half a mar like a marathon on that day, just running around town, Fifth <laughs> Avenue. Wait. <laughs> have we asked you what? Have we asked you what uh, your favorite Mayor K video is? Did you ask me? Oh, not yet. Great question. Great question. Ooh, um, that's a good question. I would say my, it's like picking my babies right here. <laughs> um, one of my favorite videos, I would say, and you know, it's I guess for the more well-known videos is. Um, I mean, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna throw a couple out there because it's just tough to pick one high five new york is close to my heart my first viral personal viral vi video that went out there and that was like you know just like it's your first it's, it's, it's cool it's special and so so simple and so beautiful um i love the work i did around with um those are people who are experiencing homelessness so super soul party i know was mentioned slash the homeless makeover that was really um special and that when we i turned that into a nonprofit, which we've been doing for the past four years um right. thanks to world parties for those who are experiencing homelessness in the community um, but there's a video which I didn't create. That's not really, it's not public. You know, it's my, it's one of my favorite videos. I made it for my grandmother. I was in Singapore and I missed her 
90th birthday and um and i wrote a song and i and i created a montage and and she i played and they played it for her by that birthday and and she loved it and so uh, that was my great grandmother so that's you know one of my closest that's one of my ones close to my heart and if not my first video that i ever made was for my for my sister's bas mitzvah i was in israel and had to send stuff i ran around ben yehuda just getting people to say Mazalto, you know, one of those. Uh, before I was the thing, before I was the thing. I just right. so that, was, that was fun, and that that started my process of creating my own videos so early, early on when I was 18. having these having these viral videos. Can can you now predict or anticipate what what features need to be present in a video for it to go viral? Right, when you do your videos, you say if it has this emotional connection, if it has this shocking moment, if it tugs in the heart in this way, this thing's gonna take off. Like, what do you need to create or embed in the video to make it a success? Great question. What hooks? Asking for asking for a friend. Asking right. for a friend. <laughs> uh, who do you share uh, with first? <laughs> it's a good question. And you know, anybody who promises you the you know virality is, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But obviously, it's always great to have as many hooks in it as possible that will hook people on. And I think it, you know, it's a understanding your audience or understanding what you're trying to get out there, being a clear message, of re being real, being passionate about what you're creating. I think is is huge. It, it shows, it comes through the video, um, keeping it around the time that's, that's relevant, that's trending. So if it's around Hanukkah, making a video around Hanukkah, that could help something going viral, getting, um, people who are perhaps recognized or have their own followings cross collaboration. If you want to go fast, go by yourself. If you want to go, you know what I'm saying? Right. If you want to, if you want to go far, work with a team. And so the, um, collaboration is huge. I wish that's, you know, getting, just bringing it down and bringing it personal. I wish that's something that I learned earlier on. Um, there was a lot of things that my own like limited vision and, and ego got in the way of. And, uh, and that's a massive, uh, me message I try to share with people is, is, you know, is, it's all about teamwork. And, um, yeah, and I think ultimately also is is something that has, if you can, some sort of emotional pull to it. So, laughter, humor, humor, or even some sadness. If it moves your heart, it brings you to tears, or brings you to to some sort of joy. Something that makes you feel something that's shareable. Hmm. It's Amazing. beautiful, Mayor. Thank you so much for being with us thank tonight. We this. really appreciate sharing some of the magic, some of the positivity. Rabbi Brody, did you have one more thing you wanted to uh, get in? Now, I'm just wondering, you know, Corona, it's been 10 months already. Is there something big you guys are working on right now you know, to kind of bring things together, inspire people? Is there something in the works? That's a great question. Um, Dick, I created a video mid-Corona mid a few months ago that, that Baruch Hashem did pretty good and, and brought a lot of hope. Um, we also had a, a big campaign around masks at the time about creating, drawing your own smile on, on, on masks and, and spreading that smile. Um, currently there's nothing specific in the works of that, um, in this, in, in the realm of Corona and, and I appreciate the, the, the seed and, and, uh, we'll see what comes. <laughs> so perhaps there'll be something coming now. Put a little cameo. Uh, we'll I love your, uh, I love your newest video with, with Joey Newcomb and, and Benny Friedman. It's a great video. A lot of positivity and the three of you play off each other. They're really three ambassadors of positivity and it's a really great video. Everyone should check it out among all the others. Where can people find your videos? Thanks. Um, yeah, they can find type in Mayor K M E I R K A Y on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Um, and yeah, you could be sure to, um, yeah, if you want to stay in touch, I, I definitely have a, a mailing list as well. We try to spend once. I also have, Ooh, this shameless plug rabbi on your podcast. The great day Go podcast, the Absolutely. great day podcast. I have a podcast, I have a podcast, I have a podcast. <laughs> um, we have about 50 plus episodes and uh, we have on their thought leaders, rabbis, creators, singers, musicians, creatives, and we talk about their journey, insights, life, inspiration, motivation. Be sure to get a lot of value out of those um, 30 to 60 minute conversations. Everyone should check it out. I want to thank you, Mayor, for being with us tonight. Thank you for being vulnerable. Thank you for having courage. All the qualities that you talked about that people need, you you model tonight and, and practiced. And if nothing else, people need to know that the guy they're watching in those videos who's beaming light and has the biggest smile has a therapist it's on his real. speed dial. And it takes you car it took you courage to to share that and to admit that, but it also gives so many people such hope to reach out, ask for help, 
turn to the support that's out there. And I, I want to just uh, leave you tonight, Mayor, as, as, as you uh, leave us. I want to tell you there's, there's one of our listeners who's commenting right now on YouTube, is streaming in a, a couple places, um, who's an amazing young man who I've uh, become close with, Yitzchak Friedman. Yitzchak is a young autistic man, and he's not letting his autism hold him back. And he's been working on getting Torah videos out and making a difference. And, uh, you know, I'll just I'll show you some of these comments that he's posting about how beautiful and people step out of their comfort zone, spread light. It's hard to do. It's easy to fall to your faults. Someone who's autistic, this is relatable. Um, and, and, you know, he's, he's writing a bunch of messages like this. So it's resonating for Yitzchak. It's given him continued uh, hope and, and faith and, and energy to keep giving his gift uh, to the world and to many other listeners, I'm sure, as well. So, Mayor, thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks for all your videos. Thanks for everything that you do. Thank you so much for allowing me to be on your platform today. And may you all be blessed to continue to show up with a positive light. And just coming off Hanukkah with adding more lights, um, may you have the courage and the strength to show up powerfully and, and to continue doing your holy work. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Love that guy. That's wow. Very exciting. He's great. Great. Amazing Who needs coffee if you have Mayor K on? No, he's fantastic. And he practices a branded type of coffee. How many he people does. today? How many people today would announce on the internet publicly? You know, therapist is in my top five speed dials, my top five faves. Yeah, no, it's, that's uh, it's pretty courageous. It's I mean, it, it's it's huge. It's courageous. It takes it out of the limelight. It takes away the stigma. Right. Um, I definitely think it's more prevalent in in, in um, acceptable now than it than it used to be. Like I even remember when I, when you were dating Rabbi Goldberg, how many couples who were dating were seeing therapists during the dating process or immediately afterwards during marriage? Zero. Um, Zero. And, and I'm, I'm younger than you, and it was close to zero when I was dating as well. Um, I think it's much more prevalent now. It's much more spoken about, and, and we have a lot more work to do, though. We do. We do. I'm so grateful to him. And those, those videos are fantastic. And um, I hope they continue to go viral because he's the biggest shliach, probably, right? 350 million views. You name me one other Chabad, Chabad rabbi who, you know, even the Kinnis HaShluchim doesn't have 350 million it's only like 200 million now but even the Knesset Shluchim so he is he's among the biggest and it's a big lesson that if a person speaks to their talents don't compete with other people figure out your right. gift and your voice what you're meant to contribute the difference that you can make so it was great I, I loved his running um, uh, metaphor yes. because it always bothered me I'd be like 20 like 15 miles into a run and this little kid would come out like starting with fresh legs and he'd be running by me and I'd be like buddy don't don't think you can run by me. I've been running for two hours. So right. I thought that was a great imagery, though, of like you never know where someone's coming from. You never know where they're on the journey. That resonated with me. That's great. That's great. Um, gentlemen, this just in. Thank God. Thank God. No enormous, no enormous shame on you tonight. But, you know, there were some people who misunderstood the bill that was proposed and saw the aid to Israel and called out or challenged it. Mostly misunderstanding. Um, but it is important to realize that Israel gets aid from America. Palestinians also get aid from America, despite not being nearly as as uh, critical or supportive of an ally. And uh, so I'm not calling anyone out. No shame on you on that. Just something for us to keep an eye on and make sure that our friends remain our friends. But Baruch Hashem, thank God. <laughs>
the designer, and they're very popular among Orthodox Jewish community. Listen, someone who produces non-iron white shirts is going to have broken in <laughs> to the Orthodox Jewish community. So um, so someone on Lakewood reported they got a package. It had the shirts he ordered. And a couple of days later, he got a package with the shirts he ordered a second time. But he only obviously ordered them once. Right. So he called Char Tibbet's customer service to explain what happened. And the representative said, oh, there's a glitch in the system. And the system was telling workers that thousands of orders waiting to be filled. But they were filled. And so they got filled again. And that's why so many came. So, and and the, the worker basically said, like, maybe you could keep them. And the reader said, as an Orthodox Jew, we have a code of ethics, and we can't keep what's not ours, and I have to send it back, which is really outstanding. But here's the, here's the other outstanding part. The representative told him that she had, in fact, been noticing a large number of orders sent to Lakewood that were being sent back to the company because this glitch was happening much more widely. And she noticed from that zip codes in that area, sometimes you get a bad rap on these kinds of issues that that community who were getting double the delivery were sending it back. And so that nice. representative Charles Terry was really, uh, was really impressed with that. And so they are the recipients of the hats off to you, kudos to you, segment tonight on, on Behind the Bima. The best so part got, is when you call customer service, they all have British accents. It's worth nice. it just to hear it. <laughs> yeah, even though they're in like Montana or right. <laughs> they're, in, they're in India. Singapore. In India, uh, exactly. Practicing, practicing so that's a British weird accent. British accent, by the way. <laughs> yeah. So here's a question I have for both of you. So this this Friday is a Sarah Bateves, minor fast day, one of the fast days. Tenth yes. of Teves commemorates Nebuchadnezzar, a siege around Jerusalem that began the whole process that obviously we mourn with the three weeks, Shuas of Batamas, Tishabav. It really is what led to it all, the beginning of the of the downfall, the siege, ultimately the destruction, a terribly, terribly sad day. And it is the only fast that can fall on a Friday. And why is it that we observe it on a Friday? Other fasts that might fall on a Friday, we either do early, we push later. The only fast that could fall on a Friday. So the answer is the Pasuk describing Asar Batevis calls it etzem hayom hazeh, the very same words that are used to describe Yom Kippur. That means it has to be observed on the day it falls. So only Asar Batevis and Yom Kippur are observed on the day that they fall, which is a Friday. It's not going to happen again on a Friday for what, like 300 years. years or something? For a while. No, like it's no, some, Friday some, would be every 20 years. But oh, Friday's every it, 20 years, but, but it overlaps with, is that it? Yeah, it overlaps with the 25th. That's overlaps where you with the get 25th. it. To. Right. With jobs every exactly. Right. Right. exactly. Anyway, it's an unusual day. We fast on a Friday. You end the fast with Kiddush. Um, in fact, I, I was looking today and I saw some actually hold, and maybe we have to revisit our times for Friday. You should dive in Mincha early, Kabbalah Shabbos early, and get to Marav right at Shkia to get people home as early as possible. Make Kiddush, break the fast, don't prolong it. So somebody texted us in, in one of our groups and said, let's make sure we get a Chazan up Friday night who's going to move. Right. We're all Express fasting thing. the whole day Friday. Express We're all fasting. This is not a time, as Moish Francesa would say, this is not a time for a Kabbalah, Kabbalah Shabbos where you sing the paragraph and go back and repeat the end of the paragraph. You got to get a Chazan who flies. So I said, listen, it's a short Friday. I'm not saying you should schlep it out. You should move, but it's still Kabbalah Shabbos. You got to sing a little. So the person challenged me and said, hey, I davened on Shavuot this morning and you wouldn't let me sing Hallel. This individual davened after we stayed up the entire night of Shavuos and asked me if they could sing Hallel and I in a sleepless stupor said not if you want to still be in this shul not a chance you got to move. So he challenged me on it and I said here's the reason why. I think you can't compare sleep deprivation with food deprivation. Sleep deprivation is much more oppressive. We have to be much more sensitive. Nope. Have, Rabbi Brody sits next to me on the bima. When we look out, by the way, sometimes you're not looking out, Abima, <laughs> but on Shavuos morning when you look out, there are times that even though there are hundreds of people in the room, yeah. there may not be a minion listening to the Haftorah. It's lights <laughs> out. Everyone is no, out. And you're still wrong. I'm going to disagree with you on this there's, one. There's a, there's a pool of drool. <laughs> Everyone's out cold, out cold. Shavuos morning is like, it's like torture. Right. When they kidnap somebody, the enemy army, you keep them awake. That's torture. You can't yeah, sing hallel. That's torture. No. Yeah, they don't Much go on worse. hunger strikes even, that are that are like even, five minutes. It's like a 20 minute hunger comparable. strike. I remember actually the last time this happened, the Chazan did dray it out a little bit and I was ready to explode. There is nothing worse then waiting for a slow Baal Tefillah when you are starving, I get hangry, and you want nothing to do with me. We need to be in the express lane. It's Kavada Brios this Friday night, and uh, I think it's much worse than, than the sleep on Shavuos. Really? Much worse. Much worse. Oh, first of all, one second. 
all anyone has to do right now is take a look and they'll see why we have these positions. <laughs> Rabbi Moskowitz is skin and bones. So nah, a fast nah, for nah, him, nah, nah. The, he, there's no backup. There I have no reserves. There's nothing to rely on. There's no reserves. There's no reserves. There's no in, reserves. Fact, in fact, we got to end the show soon because if Rabbi Moskowitz doesn't replenish any moment now, <laughs> he's done. Yeah. So he's got no reserves and I got plenty of reserve so I can go and it's not a problem. Listen, I don't think you schlep it and I'm not telling you you got to sing extra parts of it, but this? I don't think you got to How about this? Either. Well, let's have two minyanim on Friday night. We'll have the Moskowitz minion and the Goldberg minion. Was, okay. Goldberg minion, the minion will be Carl Bach in singing. The no, Moskowitz no, no. Whoa, 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 minion will be beautiful whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa. The with the Stop express the lane. And let's see who gets more people at their minion. Unfair. <laughs> Unfair. Nobody's suggesting we go slow, Carl Bach. Nobody's suggesting over singing. You know, just because you're hangry already now doesn't mean that you have to project to Friday night. <laughs> All I'm saying is a fascinating question. Which is harder, davening Shavuos morning when you haven't slept or davening this Friday night when you haven't I'll, eaten? I'll, I'll tell Interesting you the proof. question. I'll tell you the proof, but I'll tell you the proof that yeah. I got more questions today about davening in neighborhood minyanim because they'll be done quicker in a shorter walk home than I ever get on Shavuos morning about davening locally so you can get back to sleep earlier. First of all, I want you to know I challenge that in a heartbeat and I'll tell you why. Every neighborhood minion I've seen or davened at when we, before the shul was open, everyone stays and stands and schmoozes afterwards. And the shul, you're out of there. The security guard's going to shoot you if you don't leave. You're not allowed to linger. So everyone's out of there like Vladimir. Let's see. Let's two minyanim this Friday night at BRS. The Moskowitz minion versus the Goldberg minion. Okay, but one second, one second. Only on condition that Shavuos morning, and let's assume you stay up, the Shavuos, Shavuos morning, you, after staying up the whole night, have to lead the singing hollow minion. I'll do and a little singing many, and I'll and Let's see how many you get this morning for, for the singing hollow. Game on. Game on. <laughs> got my competitive chance. juices flowing. There's no question that Shavuos morning is a harder daven than this Friday night. Can we both agree that, that neither one's ideal? No, no, <laughs> like, let's, let's both honest. agree that you shouldn't schlep either one, but I think Shavuos morning's got to be the tougher one. Tougher one of the two, if you got to choose one. I just realized there's no lunch then on Friday. We're not doing That's that. Correct. Now, here's the big question. Do you break your fast, milchix or fleshix, this Friday night? Oh, my goodness. Rabbi Moskos, I'm not sure you can continue on the show to even raise such a question. What do you mean? It's birthday cake. First of all, it's, break it's, a fast it's bad enough. Fleshix. Who breaks fast, enough. fast with fleshix? Rabbi Moskowitz. It's bad enough that we're still trying to teach you to appreciate Shomer Nagia, <laughs> but now you got to throw in, now you got to throw in milchix on Friday night? Oi, 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 oi. It's good yeah, thing you have to qualify that statement for those who don't understand your comment. <laughs> for those who joined the show late. Rabbi yes. Moskowitz said that his favorite video was the one that lacked the Shomer Nagia that other rabbis apparently used to protest. I just assumed they didn't actually slap five. You know, like you can go like that. You don't know if I'm actually touching my hand or not. I can give the benefit of the doubt. Don LeKafzchut. You're mamish. You're like the Rav Levi Yitzchak of our generation. That is tremendous. That is tremendous. Although Rav Levi Yitzchak definitely saying Kabbalah Shabbos on Asar Bateves going into Shabbos. And hollow on Shavuos morning. <laughs> 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 All right, we're having way too much like, fun here. Just this, just in the breaking news. You, apparently, the listeners. Hold on, are hold, on hold on, hold on, hold on, yeah. hold on, hold on. <laughs> now you could go. <laughs> Those Boy, white goodness. shirts from that uh, Charles toilet are on sale <laughs> on dance deals. Yes, this just said, Monday. thank you to our listeners. So they're always on sale. I've Breaking never seen news. or <laughs> love our lower <laughs> sales. At what point do you realize that's just their base price and everyone who pays above that are the right. fools? That's a fair point. That's a fair point. So funny. interesting. Um, yeah, so this Friday night, what do you eat? You got to, I don't know, do you start light? Do you go all in right away? Do you make kiddush on wine or grape juice this Friday night after fasting all day? Ooh. Grape juice. Grape juice, challah, and then you take a break. You let it settle in your stomach, coat the <laughs> sides of your stomach, and then you come back for a little bit more later. I wish we could bring a video camera to like follow each of you. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I'm probably going to do. do I'll tell you what I'm probably going to do. Actually, yeah, I'll tell you what I'm probably going to do. Kiddush, hamotzi, mm -hmm. you want to get the bread in your system right away. A cup of coffee. before you no. Don't even bring me the appetizer. I need a cup of coffee. You're not gonna sleep. If my kids were here, they would tell you and shout out. Cup of coffee to, in a Danish. Shout out to my daughter who loves me to shout her out. Atara's birthday is next week. Happy birthday, Atara Minsky. 
dot com. Happy, <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy birthday to you. She's collecting gifts for her birthday. Just joking. But um, but my kids know that at the end it could be the end of Yom Kippur. It could be two hours after Yom Kippur when we finally get home. I say, I just need a cup of coffee. I could fast a whole other day. Just need my cup of coffee. That's it. Well, I will say of the many great qualities of my mother, growing up, my mother always broke her fast, no matter which fast, except for the ones that you can't. She always broke it on a hot dog. That was my mm. mom growing up. She broke her fast on hot dogs. That's a Clearly, right that, <laughs> that is that's intense. Yankee that's fan. intense. That's hardcore. Breaking shout it on out, a hot dog. Shout out, Mrs. Moskowitz. Rabbi Brody, you have some vegan Friday night dinner plans? Yeah, we're actually doing a special Chinese because it's, you know, that's the season. So we're doing some Chinese, but of course it's uh, tofu, tofu Chinese from Ellie's. <laughs> nice. Of course it is. You're still doing the vegan yeah. thing. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That that and everyone else is having like General Tso's chicken. So Ellie's Rabbi like, Brody, as you, as you are turning 46 this week, and again, a happy birthday to you. Why you. are you vegan? Is it, is it a religious oh. statement, a moral statement? Is it a health yeah, statement? Yeah. What is the reason? It's really health. I'm trying to live, you know. And from what I understand, you can live a little bit longer, maybe. <laughs> I've, I, for the record, I've seen several unhealthy, obese vegans. That's true. I mean, you could eat French fries your whole uh, day and technically still be vegan. It's not not so healthy. You could have a lot of bread, pasta, right? French People fries. People gain weight. Vegan. A lot of, yeah, I gained a lot of weight. Yeah, Big I'm vegan, not knocking right? it. You know, everybody's got to find what works for them, health wise, moral wise, religious wise. So I'm not criticizing it. I just uh, could never. It's complicated. It. Trying, I'm trying it out. I've been trying it. For I did it for years. seven months, and then I just ran out of food to eat. I was eating like sweet potatoes three meals a day, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. So hats off to you, Rabbi Brody. Well, one second. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> hats off to you. All right, we are overtime, gentlemen. <laughs> want to again, want to again thank uh, Mayor Kay for being on. Shout out to my buddy Shy Stern for helping. Uh, connect us that was great and, um thank 350 you for million videos. viewers do you understand how many that is we're, we're almost yeah. there well thanks to buying the beam the i just got him another million views just we are number five in australia right now just don't forget we're number five in australia yeah we're climbing Bring the charts. australia yeah so everybody like and uh share a review wait till so you see more coming people can week. hear the mayor k's of the world yeah wait till you see next week's guests we got great stuff coming so to our audience we wish you a meaningful fast, an easy fast, and a beautiful Friday night davening this week. A, good <laughs> meal, a nice hearty meal that will follow. Happy birthday. Until next week, stay happy, stay healthy.